right, good morning, B-Day Geometry people. I miss you. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm currently sitting outside on my screen and porch, really bundled up, watching this snowfall, and it's amazing. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying your day with it. Um, but it's cold out here. Hopefully that won't bother you with this. Um, this is what we would, part of what we would have done in class today, and, um, and we can't lose any more ground. So here's what I would love for you to do. I've sent you a PDF of this screen, and uh, you can print it out, or I guess you can know, just write them on a piece of paper like you would in class, too. But um, print this out, or write it on a piece of paper, and see if you can answer these questions. Um, and if you can't, or if you have questions about it, I'm about to walk you through it. Okay? So if you're going to do it on your own, pause this thing, or stop it, and do it on your own, or do a section at a time. Now, my dog's going crazy. Here we go. The... Rectangles, rhombuses, and squares are all um, parallelograms. So opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, the diagonals bisect each other, consecutive angles are supplementary. All of those things still happen on all of rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. Rectangles have two properties. You should know them by now. Um, if you don't, you will by next week. That's for sure. It's 90 degree angles, so angle LEA is 90 degree angle, angle EAP is 90 degree angle, etc., etc. You got 90 degree angles, and the diagonals bisect each other. LA is congruent with PE. So since they bisect each other as well, all of these parts right here are congruent. Okay? So if AL is equal to 10, then PE equals 10, and then PD is half of that 5. So that's where that 5 comes from. But the diagonals are congruent. The other thing that happens that's important is that because the diagonals are congruent and they bisect each other, all of these little triangles, when both diagonals are drawn, are isosceles. So if we know one angle measure, so if we know that this angle 2 up here is 50 degrees, we can figure out what all these other angles are, every other angle in there other than, of course, the 90 degree angle. Um, if that's Two, uh, if angle 2 is 50 degrees, then this is an isosceles triangle, then so is angle 1, 50 degrees. Angle 5 is complementary to angle 2 because that's a 90 degree angle. So if angle 2 is 50, angle 5 is 40. Um, angle 3 is a part of this isosceles triangle. Um, so if this is ang if angle 5 here is 40, this angle, ba other base angle is 40. 40 plus 40 is 80. What's left? 100. Or, another way I can get angle 3. Angle 3 is also an exterior angle of this triangle right here. So it's equal to the sum of angle 2 plus angle 1. 50 plus 50 equals 100. So those are, you got all that stuff going on. Or, I guess you could have figured out what angle PDL is here right here. And then, of course, you got supplements as well. Angle 4, lots of ways we can get there. Um, I'll just say alternate interior angles are congruent. So angle 4 is equal to angle 5. Uh, so rectangles, if you know one angle, you know them all. Um, all right, squares are rectangles and rhombuses. So you've got all the properties of parallelograms. You also have congruent diagonals. you got 90 degree angles. Those are the rectangle properties. The rhombus properties tells us that the diagonals are perpendicular, that the diagonals bisect the angles. So angle GRA is bisected. Uh, and then, of course, all the sides are congruent, which I think you probably already knew that about a square. So when it tells us that RG is equal to 8, what is GN equal to? Well, because a square is a rhombus and all the sides are congruent, GN also equals 8. Uh, this is me just trying to say up here that all of these angles here are congruent. All the brown ones that I've marked here are congruent. All the green ones are congruent as well. Any brown one and any green one, they're supplements. Or sorry, they're complements of each other. They add up to equal 90. So this angle 1 is a complement of angle 4. All right, back to my square. If GA equals 26, so that's this entire diagonal, what is RN equal to? 26. And then EN is uh, half of RN because the diagonals are bisected. So, um, dude, hold on. Okay, I had to pause recording for a second, and while I did, I just heard thunder out here. So that, that thunder snow going on, which is pretty fantastic. Hopefully you'll hear it while I'm doing it. All right, back to my square. Um, so we have 90-degree um, angles, of course, with our square. And because a square is a rhombus, the diagonals bisect these angles. So that because the 
a square is a rhombus. We got perpendicular angles, so angle 2 and angle 4, of course, are equal 90 degrees. But then angle 1 is going to be half of 90 degrees because the diagonals bisect the 90 degree angle. So every angle inside of a square is equal to 45 or 90 degrees. I'll never give you an angle measure for a square, nor should I. Okay, rhombuses, we have um, congruent sides. So TR is congruent with RA, is congruent to CA, is congruent to CC. All the sides are congruent. All right, we got that going on. And as we were just saying, we got perpendicular angles here in the middle. So angle one is surely simple. And then the third thing that's important is that the diagonals bisect the angle. So this big angle, TRA, is bisected by angle uh, by CR. So angle 2 is congruent with this other little angle over here. All right, so if TC is equal to 15, what is CA equal to? 15. If CR is equal to 12, what is KA equal to? Well, are the diagonals congruent of a rhombus? Mm, no. So just because uh, CR is equal to 12, we would know that CK and KR are both equal to 6, but that tells us nothing about what KA is, at least yet. Eventually, we'll have a way of doing that. So angle 1 is equal to 90. Um, we know that this other angle is equal to 25 down here. What does that mean? If that's 25, then so is this 25. And then so is whoops, this 25. And this 25. So what is angle 2? Um, angle 2 is going to be a supplement of 25, or sorry, it's a complement of 25. Why? Because this is a right triangle here. We've got this right triangle. This is 90 degrees. I can mark those. Sorry, it's hard, a little bit hard to do with my gloves. Um, and so take 90 away from 180. Angle 2 and this 25 degree angle here have to add up to equal 90. So angle 2 is a complement of 25. So this is 65 degrees, uh, which means that this is 65 degrees, which means what's going on across the way there? Yeah, angle 3 also equals 65 degrees, okay? The angle measure I didn't put on here, I wish I had, is what's the measure of angle TCA? The answer is 130. A bunch of different ways we could get it. Um, this total angle here is 50 so it's going to be the supplement of that, or of course it's going to be double the 65. So those are the things that happen in a rhombus. Now, what I was going to do in class with you the other day was this type of question. Um, but So let me walk you through it, and, and we'll pick up these pieces next week of what happens with it. This is a special case where RE is a median of a right triangle. And what happens when... When this the, the theorem that you really actually haven't learned yet is this: a median coming from a uh, right angle of a right triangle is equidistant from point P, point A, and point R from all three vertices of the triangle. So, what you end up with is um, three congruent segments. Which means, what types of triangles do you have here? Isosceles triangles, kind of like up here. More on that in just a minute. Uh, kind of like where I lost my my splitting there, uh, kind of like the rectangles. So uh, we have isosceles triangles here and here. So if RE equals 14, well then so does PE and so does EA. So what does PA equal? 28. I'll show you that, what's going on under the hood here in just a second. So we have isosceles triangles, so if angle, uh, this angle here is equal to 20, then angle 1, those are base angles of isosceles. Angle 2 is going to be the vertex angle of that, so 20 plus 20 is 40. What's left? 140. Angle 4 is going to be complementary to 1 because it's a 90 degree angle, a 20 degree angle, and what's left? 70. And then angle 3 is going to be a congruent to 4 because of that's the isosceles triangle and because angle 3 and 20 have to be complements. Okay, so th these are the mostly the types of questions that you're going to be seeing from me on your quiz next class that we will uh, we'll go over the concept guide. We'll go over your homework, and then we'll take a quiz Tuesday on uh, Section 5.4. I hope that this has been helpful. Stay warm. Enjoy your snow day. Get some rest. Bye.